everybody. So I am here today to sew with you and I hope you'll join along. I have some instructions. Actually, I just have a list of ingredients or what you need for your project. It's going to be a tea caddy, which holds tea bags. So if you are a tea lover like me and you travel places or you go places where you want to drink tea and you don't want to drink what's at the restaurant, um, you can bring your tea with you in your bag or um, take it with you when you go to travel. Um, recently, I've been doing a lot of traveling and I've been putting my tea in a plastic Ziploc bag, which is not nice for somebody who sews and can make something like this. So I decided to make a tea caddy and I gave one away to a, as a gift uh, to a friend a couple of days ago and she loved it. And it's so simple and easy to make. Um, so it's a tea caddy or it could also be a card holder because it is the perfect size to hold a um, business card or, well, six business cards or um, your gift cards, you could put your um, Starbucks cards in it, whatever you wanna do. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn the camera around so that you can see what I'm doing. First thing I'm gonna do is show you the list of items that you're going to need. That way you can take a screenshot and um, have it for later so you don't have to try to keep replaying this and finding the dimensions. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn the camera around. So these are my items. There, there is two pieces. So I went ahead and pieced one of the pieces. You don't have to do this. You can just make it a plain piece of fabric if you like. But there are two pieces that are six and a half tall by seven and a half wide. So this piece is two and a half inch strips sewn together to make that six and a half inch tall piece. There are three pieces that are five inches by seven and a half wide. And then there are two pieces of ribbon that are eight inches long. You can also use a piece of interfacing if you want your little wallet to be a little um, sturdier. But you'll see, um, the reason I decided not to do that with this is I wanted you to see that you really don't need to do that. It's plenty sturdy um, just with the layers of fabric. So I'm not making mine with interfacing, but you can if you want. And now I'm going to go ahead and give you this. You can screenshot this so that you have all of your dimensions that you need and you don't have to keep replaying the video to get your dimensions of your pieces. So I'll go ahead and hold that here for a couple of seconds so you can get a screenshot. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is take these three pieces. Now, I'm sorry, I'm holding my camera so it's going to get a little jiggly here, but um, I don't wanna put it on the stand yet because we're gonna go ahead and move right over to the sewing machine. Um, first thing I'm gonna do is take these three pieces, the five inch by seven and a half inch pieces. What we're going to do is, you know what? I am gonna put this on the holder, hold on. Put this on my stand. First thing we're gonna do is press these five inch by seven and a half inch pieces. So what you're going to do is take them and fold them in half um, on the five inch side so that it's seven and a half inches wide by two and a half inches tall. And I'm just gonna go ahead and press those so that they're nice and straight. Get a good press on them. And I'll just say right now, I've got two dogs and they may whine, they may bark. Um, I'm also expecting a box from UPS, so we might end up uh, with a doorbell ringing, but you never know what might happen around here. So I might have to run off if the doorbell rings for a second, but this is live, so you just never know what's going to happen when you're doing something live. Okay. Hi, Carrie. I'm sewing. This is what I do. This is my other job, Carrie. <laughs> Okay, so what I've done is went ahead and folded these in half on the five inch side. So now they're seven and a half inch wide by two and a half inch tall. 
And we're going to take these over to the sewing machine and we're going to top stitch them along the edge. So, hold on just a sec, moving over to the sewing machine. Put this in here. So I'm just going to top stitch these um, a quarter of an inch away from the folded edge. It's just to make it look nicer, really, and to hold it nicely so it's um, so it's nice and flat. So I widened my stitch a little bit so that the top stitching looks nicer. It always looks nicer if you have a little bit wider stitch when you're top stitching. So there we go, all done. So now I'm going to move back over to the other table. You guys get to see my mess. Yeah, sewing's fun, Carrie. You should give it a go. So I'm just cutting these pieces apart. So they're just top stitched, no big deal. I'm gonna go ahead and give them a second little press after the stitching just to make them nice. Okay, now I'm gonna move this out of the way so that my stand is over what I'm working on here. Turn it down a little. Okay, so this is going to be our lining piece. We're going to sew our pockets onto that. These are our pockets, these ones that we just top stitched. So this is the six and a half inch way and this is the seven and a half inch way. And what I'm doing is putting my ruler on there and measuring down an inch and a quarter from the top. And then I'm going to put my first pocket at an inch and a quarter from the top of the interior and I'm going to go ahead and just put a pin in each side of it to hold it in place so this is going to look strange because I just had to change um, I have to make a change in the video. I left out a step in the video, so you will see now I have a different color of the interior of the, um, of the tea caddy. So I'm going to measure down from the top again, one and a quarter inches. And what I had done is I left out the step, even though I did it, I didn't show it in the video. Um, so I'm putting this one and a quarter inches down from the top of the interior, and I'm going to go ahead and pin it here. But what I didn't show in the original video was here we're going to sew the bottom seam of the pocket. So this is going to be one of the little pockets that hold your tea pieces or your tea um, bags. So we're going to sew the bottom of the pocket, and then actually I'm going to use this other fabric because I'm actually going to make this and use it. So I'm going to use this fabric for the top one. I'm going to use that for the middle one. Um, so what we're going to do is sew across the bottom of this to make the pocket and then the sides will get sewn in when we do the outer part of the um, of the tea caddy. So I'm going to go ahead and sew this bottom seam here and then I'll be right back. 
Okay, so now I've sewn this bottom seam for the first pocket. Now I'm gonna measure down one and a quarter from the top of the pocket and put on the next pocket. And then I'm going to sew this seam for the bottom of this pocket and I'll be right back. Okay, so I've sewn the bottom seam of this pocket. So now if I put something in there, it won't fall through. <laughs> And here is the bottom pocket, the last pocket, and I'm just going to line that up along the bottom edge. And this one we don't need to sew because it will be caught in after um, when we sew the outside of the tea caddy on. And that I show in the original video. So now in a second, it'll go back to showing the blue interior instead of this pink interior. Um, I just had to add that one step of sewing the bottoms of the pockets because for some reason I didn't show that in the original video. Okay, thanks. Bye. So here we go. This is the way the interior is going to be. So you've got three pockets. The top one is one and a quarter inch from the top of your interior. The next one is one and a quarter inch down from that. And the last one is along the bottom edge of your interior piece. Now what we're going to do is take this back to the sewing machine and we're going to sew um, just a basting stitch down each side to hold this together so that when we sew the front of the card wallet on, um, they don't shift around while we're sewing it. So that's what we're going to do next. Now I'm just going to base this down, widen my stitch length by quite a lot. I'm sorry, this keeps jiggling. So I'm not sewing right at a quarter of an inch because I want this to be inside my seam allowance when I'm done. I'm sewing quarter inch uh, seam allowance on all of these items as well, so. So I'm going just inside where the seam allowance is gonna be so that I don't have to pull out the uh, basting stitches later. They'll just be inside the seam allowance so you won't see them. There's that. Now, before I go back to the cutting table, actually, we probably don't even need to go back to the cutting table at this point. Um, what I want to do is sew a top stitch in the very center so that it separates our pockets so that we have our places to put our cards or our tea bags in. So I'm going to get my ruler. Out of this before I moved over there. Okay, so I have my ruler and I'm going to measure to the center seven and a half. The center of seven and a half inches is three and three quarters. So I'm measuring to the center with my ruler and I'm just going to mark it with a water soluble pen so that I know where to sew my top stitch line. Okay, so 
I was basting, so I have to take my stitch down smaller again. There we go. And switch out my foot. Oops, I keep hitting my phone. Sorry about that. There we go. So now we have two pockets, one on each side with a stitch down the center. So now we'll go back over and I'll show you the next part. Okay. So this is our interior and this is our exterior. If you decide to um, use some different pieces of fabric or maybe patchwork this together. Just remember that the top needs to be where the top of the pockets are. You know, that's pretty standard stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead and flip these right sides together. And I am going to pin them. Oh, ha, huh. hold on. I'm not going to do that. What I'm going to do first is put our ribbons on. So I'm using some seam binding as my ties for my card wallet. And what I want to do is put those right in the very center of this piece, which would be at, let's see, if it's six and a half, three and a quarter. So three and a quarter is right I had it right about right, so I'm gonna go ahead and pin my ribbon there. And same thing on the other side. And then I'm not going to carry the phone over. I'm just going to real quick run over and baste the ribbons down so I don't have to leave the pins in. I'll be right back. Okay, now the ribbons are basted on. Should have done that before I moved back over here. So what we're gonna do is take this and flip it over. So I basted the ribbons onto the outside piece in the center of the sides so that once it's sewn together, we can use those to tie the wallet together. So now you're just gonna match up all of your raw edges and pin I don't like to pin right in the very corner because if I'm um, turning corners with the sewing machine, I don't want to run into my pins. So I like to pin about an inch in on each side. And if you're like me and sometimes forget that you need to leave an opening to turn through, don't forget to somehow mark that spot where you want to turn. So the way I like to do this is I remember that a book opens this way. So I want to leave an opening. I want it to be on the back because when I sew this closed, I don't want it to show on the front of my little book. So I'm going to leave an opening on the back, on the bottom. So the back side would be the left side. 
I'm going to leave about two inches opening on the bottom in the back. And how I usually mark it is I take a different colored pen. Most of my pens are light or yellow. So I'm taking one that's like a dark pink or a red. And I have the pen going out this way. Sometimes I use two pins in that spot just to indicate that that's where I'm going to leave the space open. But this time I'm just going to do it this way. So I've put two pins there to remind myself to leave a space open for turning. So now we're going to go back to the sewing machine and we're going to just sew all the way around from here all the way around to here and then we'll turn it. So I think we've probably only been working for maybe, what, 10 minutes at the most, and we're almost done already. It's that quick. Switch back to my quarter inch foot. If I was making a bag or something that was going to have stress on it, I definitely would use a half inch um, seam allowance, but because this is something that's not going to have a lot of stress on it, it's only carrying tea bags or um, cards, so they're lightweight and it's not going to be carrying anything heavy. There's no need to worry about the seam allowances being small, so a quarter inch seam allowance is plenty for this. On a normal bag or something like that, I would probably use a half inch, but we're doing quarter inch, so just go right up to where the, you're a quarter, a quarter of an inch from the end and pivot. Make sure you're not sewing in any of the ends of your ribbon other than the ones that you want to sew in. sure I get my edges together good. Hi Lisa. You can't tell what it looks like yet, Lisa. I haven't flipped it out yet. All you can see is the back side. Okay, and I'm just gonna do a little back stitch um, at the beginning and the end on here because when you flip it, sometimes your stitches wanna tear out, so. Okay, so I'm actually not going to switch back over to the other, oh, yeah, I will. We'll just go back, go back to the table. So here it is all sewn together. Now what I want to do is trim the corners. <laughs> yes, it is. It's a tea caddy. Um, I don't know why I've never made one before, but I've seen them a million times and I've thought about making them. So what I'm doing is I'm trimming the corner off close to where the stitching is, but not through the stitching. And I'm also going to trim a little bit of the excess seam allowance away. And that just makes it easier to get a pointier point on your edges. So as you can see, I trimmed across and then I trimmed away the seam allowance a little bit. And you can do that on each corner. 
So Lisa, um, I know you came in a little bit late, but there's at the beginning, there's a, um, a list of things that you need to make this, a list of pieces and sizes. And I'm doing the whole thing on video, so you should be able to watch it and see it. And it'll be uh, recorded, so it'll be here on the channel or on the uh, page. So I've trimmed away each of the corners, and now I'm just going to flip this out through the hole that we left. This is called pillow turning. <laughs> so let's hope I didn't, nope, I didn't tie in, leave my ribbons in anywhere. Didn't sew them into my seams. That's a good thing. Okay, so I'm flipping this out. And what I use, so you can, if you have a bodkin, um, that's a little pointy thing that you can get into the corners with that doesn't have an actual point on the end. It has like a little a little ball on the end so that you don't stick your stick the point through the corners. Um, I don't have one. Uh, I like them. I wouldn't mind having one. I'll probably buy one someday. But after 40 some odd years of sewing, I've never used one. I use this cute little chopstick. <laughs> so that's what I'm going to get into the corners with and get them all pushed out so they're nice and pointy. Or as pointy as I'm going to get them because of course they never come up perfectly pointy for me for some reason even when I do a good turn. So there we go. And now we just have this opening here at the bottom. And what I'm going to do is push out all of the seams, all along the seams, because I want this to get nice and square. So I'm going to push all along the seams with my with my chopstick. So as you can see, it's still, it's already pretty sturdy and I didn't use any interfacing in it. So that interfacing really is, you know, optional. You don't really need it. Okay, move this mess out of the way here. And I'm going to use the end of my chopstick while I am pressing so that I can get this nice and flat. And I'm just running along right in front of where my iron is with the chopstick to get it nice and flat on the top. And then of course because I was moving the iron Got a little bit of a there. Okay. And now this bottom part where we've left an opening. If you flip that opening in a quarter of an inch and press. You won't need to sew this by hand. You can, we're going to top stitch it so that'll hold it closed.
I think this is such a cute little project and it's so quick and easy and it's great for a Christmas gift. If you just wanna make a really quick little hostess gift, I made it for a friend of mine who invited me over for tea a couple of days ago. Um, just the night before we were, I was gonna go over, I just threw one together and it came out super cute. So there is the front of it. Oh, sorry, I'm out of frame there. Sorry about that. So here's the front and here's our ties. Here's the inside and the pockets. Here's my business card and you see it fits in there nicely and tight, which is good if, you have, if you're using it for, um, for your uh, gift cards or whatever, they fit nice and tight in there so that you don't lose them. And now what I'm gonna do is just um, top stitch very, very close to the edge just to catch in that raw edge on the bottom. And then it will be all done. So I'm gonna move this back with me over to the sewing machine. Sorry about that, I got disconnected. <laughs> I, was, I looked down and all of a sudden, oh, I think I've lost you guys. <laughs> Super sorry about that. Anyway, I'm back. So I'm just going to do a little top stitch. Very, very close to the edge. I always start on the bottom. don't back stitch when I do a top stitch and usually I pull the thread through but I got discombobulated when my video turned off so I didn't pull the thread through this time but normally I don't just start out I pull the thread through so that I can tie it off with a needle afterwards hi Lisa sorry for losing you I uh, got disconnected So I'm just doing about an eighth of an inch um, top stitch on this. Nope, it was definitely me. <laughs> I looked down and I was like, oh no, I've lost it. <laughs> I've lost the video. And I'm leaving a little bit of a long tail because what I'm gonna do now, and I'm not gonna have you guys wait around and watch me do this, but what I'll do is I'll take these threads and I will put them in a needle and I will bury them in between the, um, the layers of this. So I'm not gonna do that on camera, but that's what I would do to hide the threads so that the top stitching looks nice. So here is the outside. Here's the inside with our six pockets for our tea bags or our cards. And then when it's closed, it's like this. And I usually press it closed so that it stays nice like this. I'm gonna go ahead and put 
this on the holder so y'all can see better and I can show you with two hands instead of one. So forgive the threads hanging out here, but these will be buried between the layers by using a needle. Just put the thread the thread through a needle, put it through your layers and pull it. And then you can cut off whatever you have left over the excess. So again, there's the inside and the outside. And even though I didn't tell you this in the um, directions or on the paper, the outside piece I didn't make as a single piece. I used um, three strips two and a half inches wide by seven and a half inches and sewed them together to make the outside piece. And then you can just tie it together with your ribbon. And it's really sweet. It's a great little present, super quick and easy. Also, if you're giving a gift card, this would be a great way to give the gift card to. A gift card for Starbucks or a gift card for whatever you want. Anyway, so there it is, all done. And it's so cute. I'm sorry, I really think it's cute. And we could put like a little applique of a heart on there for Valentine's Day. You could do almost anything. They're so quick. You could do a bunch of them in succession, like um, uh, chain piece them together and give them away as Valentine's gifts if you want to. If you have a, like I have a Bible study where there's eight ladies in our Bible study. I could give away eight of these as a little gift for Valentine's Day, which I might do. <laughs> anyway, so. I just thought you guys would think these were fun and they're super simple, super fast, and they came out super cute. So hope you enjoyed the video. And um, if you guys would like to join the club, I left a, a link on the first video that you can get uh, over to the page to join the club. So I will see you soon. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.